So in this video, I will be focused on Marxism, which is the political and economic theories of Karl Marx and Frederick Engels, later developed by their followers to form the basis for the theory and practice of communism. So the reason I am doing this video is because there's been a lot of talk lately about different politicians, different groups focusing on Marxism, and a lot of what I've seen actually has not been accurate. So I figured I would make this video to give people a clearer definition and explanation of what Marxism actually is. So as always, the links will be provided below, and here's just another dictionary definition of Marxism, a body of doctrine developed by Karl Marx and, to lesser extent, by Frederick Engels in the mid-19th century. It originally consisted of three related ideas of philosophical anthropology, a theory of history, and an economic and political program. There is also Marxism as it has been understood and practiced by the various socialist movements, particularly before 1914. Then there is Soviet Marxism, as worked out by Vladimir Ilyich Lenin and modified by Joseph Stalin, which under the name of Marxism-Leninism became the doctrine of the Communist Party set up after the Russian Revolution 1917. Offshots of this include Marxism as interpreted by the anti-Stalinist Leon Trotsky and his followers Mao Zedong's Chinese variant of Marxism-Leninism and various Marxisms in the developing world. And it just goes on. It's linked below, so you guys will be able to read this if you want. It just goes on to describe kind of the history of it. And I will be moving on now to describe it better. So I quickly googled Karl Marx, and it says he's a philosopher. Karl Heinrich Marx was a German philosopher, economist, historian, sociologist, political theorist, journalist, and socialist revolutionary. He was born in Germany. He studied law and philosophy at university. And he married Jenny von Westphalen in 1843. So he was born in 1818 and he died in 1883. So this is the Stanford website, which of course, link below. And it says Karl Marx. Karl Marx, 1818 to 1883, is best known not as a philosopher, but as a revolutionary whose works inspired the foundation of many communist regimes in the 20th century. It is hard to think of many who have had as much influence in the creation of the modern world. Trained as a philosopher, Marx turned away from philosophy in the mid 20s towards economics and politics. However, in addition to his overtly philosophical early work, his later writings have many points of contact with contemporary philosophical debates, especially in the philosophy of history and the social sciences and in moral and political philosophy. Historically, materialism, Marx's theories of history, is centered around the idea that forms of society rise and fall as they further and then impede the development of human productive power. Marx sees the historical process as proceeding through a necessary series of modes of production characterized by class. Struggle culminating in communism. Marx's economic analysis of capitalism is based on his version of the labor theory of value and includes the analysis of capitalist profit as the extraction of surplus value from the exploited proletariate, which just means the working class. The analysis of history and economics come together in Marx's prediction of the inevitable economic breakdown of capitalism to be replaced by communism. However, Marx refused to speculate in detail about the nature of communism, arguing that it would arise through historical processes and was not the realization of a predetermined moral idea. Marx studied law in Bonn and Berlin and then wrote a PhD thesis in philosophy comparing the views of Demetrius and Epicurus. On completion of his doctrine in 1841, Marx hoped for an academic job, but he had already fallen in with too radical a group of thinkers, and there was no real prospect. Turning to journalism, Marx rapidly became involved in political and social issues and soon found himself having to consider communist theory. His theories had about five main ideas, and one of them was class struggle, the history of all hitherto existing societies, the history of class struggle, says the Communist Manifesto, co-written with Frederick Engels and published in 1848. Marx believed that humanity's core conflict rages between the ruling class or bourgeois that controls the means of production, such as factories, farms, and mines, and the working class or proliterate, 
which is forced to sell their labor. According to Marx, the conflict at the heart of capitalism of slaves against masters, serfs against landlords, workers against bosses would inevitably cause it to self-destruct, to be followed by socialism and eventually communism. Dictatorship of the proliterate. This idea, coined by early socialist revolutionary Joseph Widmer and adopted by Marx and Engels, refused refers to the goal of the working class gaining control of political power. It is a stage of transition from capitalism to communism where the means of production pass from private to collective ownership while the state still exists. The concept includes pressing counter-revolutionaries was proclaimed by the Russian Bolsheviks in 1918. Vladimir Lenin wrote that it won and maintained by the use of violence, signaling the authoritarian draft drift that began after Russia's 1917 October Revolution. Communism. Marx and Engels wrote the Manifesto of the Communist Party in 1848 at the time of revolutionary turmoil in Europe. It only reached a wide leadership, readership in 1872, but became part of the canon of the Soviet bloc in the 20th century. For Marx, the goal was the conquest of political power by workers, the abolition of private property, and the eventual establishment of a classless and stateless communist society. According to Marx's theory of historical and materialism, societies passed through six stages, primitive communism, slave society, feudalism, capitalism, socialism, and finally global stateless communism. In reality, the abolition of private property and the collectivization of land resulted in millions of deaths, especially under Russia's Joseph Stalin and China's Mao Zedong. Internationalism, workers of the world unite, is the famous rallying cry that concludes the manifesto and seeks to create a political structure that transcends national borders. The idea lay at the heart of Soviet internationalism, uniting the destiny of countries in geographically distant as the USSR, Vietnam, and Cuba, and revolutionary groups including the Cuban FARC or the Kurdish Workers' Party, PKK, as well as anti-globalization movements. Opium of the people. Marx believed that religion, like a drug, helps the exploited to suppress their immediate pain and misery with pleasant illusions to the benefit of their oppressors. The quote, usually paraphrased as religion is the opium of the people, originates from the introduction of Marx's work, a contribution to the critic of Hegel's philosophy of right. So this is the History Channel, which typically has decent information. This was originally published November 9th, 2009, and it was updated June 7th, 2019. So it's pretty recently updated. So this just says, you know, as a university student, he was strongly criticized the political and cultural establishments. He had his friend, fellow German thinker Frederick Engels, published the Mino Communi Communist Manifesto. And this, you guys can pause this to actually read most of it. I was just going to point out some of the key points. So his father was a lawyer, lawyer who converted to Lutheranism in 1816 due to contemporary laws barring Jews from higher society. Did you know the 1917 Russian Revolution, which overthrew three centuries of Tsarist rule, included the Lenin dude, which we talked about already. After a year at the University of Bonn, he was imprisoned for drunkenness, and then he went on to the other one, which was the University of Berlin. And after receiving his degree, he began writing for the Liberal Democratic newspaper and became the paper's editor in, in 1842. And the Prussian government banned the paper as too radical the following year. So then they intervened to get Marx expelled from France, and he and Engels had moved to Brussels, Belgium, where Marx renounced his Prussian citizenship. And then mentions the Communist Manifesto again, and it goes on to say, predicted that the upcoming revolution would sweep aside the capitalist system for good, making the working men the new ruling class of the world. So, despite being denied British citizenship, he worked as a journalist there, including 10 years as a correspondent for the New York Daily Tribune, but never quite managed to earn a living wage. He was supported financially by Engels. He became increasingly isolated and focused more on developing his economic theories. Three years after, he published his first volume of Capital, his masterwork of economic theory. In it, he expressed a desire to reveal the economic law of motion of modern society. Marx would spend the rest of his life working on manuscripts for additional volumes, but they remain unfinished at the time of his death. So again, a quick search of Marxist ideas. The core ideas are that the world is divided into classes, the workers and the richer capitalists who exploit the workers. There is a class conflict that should ultimately result in socialism, workers' own means of production, and then communism, stateless, classless society. 
So here from the newstatesman.com, we see why Marx is more relevant than ever in the age of automation. I'm just going to, again, point out key factors, so if you want to actually read it, go to the link. I did screenshot most of the article, but again, not all of it. As we reach the 200th anniversary of Marx's birth, the struggle over his ideas showed no sign of stopping the American alt-right march through Charlottesville, claiming that the town had succumbed to cultural Marxism. The Bank of England governor, Mark Carney, has warned that Marxism could make a comeback due to the impacts of automation on jobs and inequality. Meanwhile, in China, a decidedly uncultural form of Marxism has been revived as the new state doctrine of Xi Jinping. By 1850, he already was a theorist of defeat, and he understood that it was going to take some time after two years of trying to push the democratic revolutions in France and Germany in the direction of social justice. Marx had admitted failure and fled to London. In his preface to a contribution to the critique of political economy, 1859, Marx explained social change as the result of a clash between two layers of reality created by human beings, the forces of production, technology, and the expertise needed to deploy it, and the social relations of production, the economic model required to bring the technology to life. Together, said Marx, the technology and the economic model form a base on which the superstructure of laws, political institution, cultures, cultures, and ideologies are founded in any given system. Revolutions be- happen when the economic system begins to retard technological progress. Fragment on machines written in 1858. He imagined a time when machines do most of the work and in which knowledge becomes social embodied in which he called a general intellect. Since capitalism is based on profits generated by workers, it, would, it could not survive a level of technological advance that eradicated the need for work. The clash between private property and shared social knowledge, he said, would blow the foundations of capitalism sky high. This prophecy, so obviously relevant in our time of robots and network knowledge, lay in the archives unread until the 1960s. After his death, his ideas suffered three reinterpretations. First, his collaborator Frederick Engels tried to systemize Marx's ideas into theory of everything in the universe, encompassing no longer just history, but physics, astronomy, astronomy, and ethnography. This was the Marxism that the leaders of the earlier socialist parties learned, but they added a second revision, claiming that Marx's theories justified peaceful parliamentary socialism, not revolution, then stating around 1899, there emerged a Marxism of confrontation and class struggle, elevating human willpower and organizational Ellen above concepts of historical inevitability or fixed stages of development. This was the Marxism that both Trotsky and Sidova had learned in the Russian underground and which brought them together as exiles in Paris in 1902. It said Russia could only become democratic under the leadership of the working class. The task was to organize workers into a party as confrontational, secretive, and hierarchical as the states run by the Tsars and Kaisers that they were to overthrow. Mass strikes and barricades, not elections, and socialist choral societies were their chosen weapons. By now, Marxism also contained a theory of the working class that was diametrically opposed to that of Marx. For Marx, the revolutions of 1848 had failed because capitalism was not ready to be overthrown. For Lenin, by 1902, it was the workers who were not ready and never would be without the cattle prod of an elite underground vanguard party to make the move. The entire skilled workforce of the developed world had been bought off by the proceeds of imperialism. Lenin said revolution would be a job for the unskilled workers in the West and for the peoples of the less developed world. From around 1910, the the nationalist revolts and land wars unfolding in Mexico, China, Ireland, and ultimately Russia seemed to confirm the prediction. Trotsky had helped to lead the revolution in 1917. He then took part in the abolition of workers' control in factories and the suppression of left-wing op- opposition movements. During the past 50 years, much of left-wing academic thought has followed the anti-humanist path Althauser laid out. Like most other people who had embraced humanism in the aftermath of war and genocide was revered but treated like a crank. However, the mark she helped to rediscover is highly relevant to the future we face. If we are to defend human rights against authoritarian populism, we must have a concept of humanity to defend, as we must if we insist that human beings should have the power to limit and suppress the activities of thinking machines. If the marks of 1844 is correct, the ideal of human liberation and communism can survive the automization and dispersal of the class that was supposed to bring it. As a revolt, 
of 2011 showed large masses of people not possess the capacity for autonomous act, self-education and collaboration that Marx admired in the Parisian working class of the 1840s. The impulse towards freedom is created by more than just exploitation. It is triggered by alienation, suppression of desire, the humiliation experienced by people on the receiving end of systematic racism, sexism, and homophobia. Everywhere capitalism follows anti-human priorities, it stirs revolt, and it's all around us. In the coming century, just as Marx predicted, it is likely that automation coupled with the socialization of knowledge will present us with the opportunity to liberate ourselves. From work that, as he said, will blow capitalism sky high, the economic system that replaces it will have to be shaped around the goal he outlined in 1844, ending alienation and liberating the individual. If he could speak across time to the people frozen in that photograph, he would say, after congratulating them for their magnificent lives of resistance and suffering, that inner desire you are suppressing for Marxism to be humanistic, that impulse towards individual liberation, it's already there in Marx, just waiting to be discovered. So paint what you want, love whom you want. F, the vanguard party, the revolutionary subject is the self.